Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this weather presentation for April 13th, 2020. As always, please consider subscribing and also viewing my website. And please consider checking out and please check out all six pages so you get all the latest weather content. And you see I've added another section here. And please check out all the pages so you can get the latest weather content from me. And everything is everything is up to date. So and as a reminder for the weather hotspot, okay, it's been in Orlando for a while. Okay. If you would like to submit a town that you want to maybe see on my website on the weather hotspot, okay, you can look at this page right here. And all you have to do is just submit your email here or email this email right here. And you can submit your next weather hotspot that I will that I will display on my website. So today we're going to be talking about my third hurricane season outlook, which is right here. Uh, but first, I just want to recap very quickly um, our severe weather reports that we had starting with yesterday it was a very significant day across the southeast. Here we had over six hundred and eighty-five wind reports high wind reports okay just it was a severe outbreak okay very destructive day and we had 40 hail reports um displayed by the green triangles but that black triangle right there in northeastern texas that means we had large hail two inches of diameter all the other green dots just mean that we saw hail the black triangle means that we had large hail two inches of diameter plus and we had 67 tornadoes uh, just yesterday alone across the southeast. So yesterday was a pretty significant day. Today was fairly significant too. Okay, this is tied to the same event. We had 14 reported tornadoes today, all in the states of Florida, South Carolina, and North Carolina. No hail reports across the mid-Atlantic. I know I got hit pretty hard. I mean, the storm wasn't that bad, but we did have some strong winds, of course. But no, no, I don't see any black squares, so six, no 65 knot winds. But we did have a hail report there just southwest of D.C. Uh, we have three hail reports, 141 wind reports, and 14 tornadoes today so far. Okay, they'll continue to be gathering data. All right, so now to get to my presentation. So a method I use for my presentation, or at least like what I use, is this website right here by the Climate Prediction Center. And... While I'm doing my presentation, so you guys can look at this, this is the latest, and this is why I wanted to wait until today, because these are updated the second Thursday of each month. So we have a 60% chance of NSO neutral, remaining most likely outcome through the autumn. And that's going to impact how we see our hurricane season. All right, so let's put this in reading view. All right, here we go. So this is the same side. I, I did make some, I did, you know, beautify it a little bit, make put like a little background on there, but nothing really has Nothing has changed except that I updated all the maps from my last video. So this is signs of a potentially active 2020 Atlantic hurricane season and obviously my third hurricane forecast. All right. So here is my third forecast. And you see we have a lot more sources that are added on now too. So this will be very helpful. So my forecast starting off 15 to 17 named storms, 8 to 10 hurricanes, three to five major hurricanes and potentially three to six of those. So three to six out of those 15 to 17 aim storms could impact the United States. Okay, that is my forecast. AccuWeather is projecting 14 to 18 aim storms, seven to nine hurricanes, two to four major hurricanes, and two to four out of the 14 out of 18 storms to impact the United States. Now, when we're talking about U.S. impacts, not all U.S. impacts have to mean uh, destructive hurricane okay the u.s impacts can mean a storm just skirting the coast it can mean a direct landfall as long as it impacts the u.s that's what that means okay colorado state university 16 name storms in our first outlook eight hurricanes and four major hurricanes okay um they don't really give a number on u.s impacts uh, seasonal average 12 name storms six hurricanes three major hurricanes that's what we usually see Okay, U.S. impacts, okay, this is not officially 2 to 4, but I looked at the data in the past 10 years, and it has shown that we usually get a couple storms, 2 to 4, that impact the United States usually every year. It doesn't always have to happen, okay, but that was just my 
look at me, or that was me, excuse me, looking at data from the past 10 years. Okay, and last year, we had 18 named storms, six hurricanes, and three major hurricanes, and about five, a little bit more or less, but about five U.S. impacts last year. So last year was a fairly significant year, and if Colorado State University's outlook is correct, we would have, it would actually be a worse year. Even though we have less named storms, we have a lot more hurricanes and a lot more, well, we have two more hurricanes and one more major hurricane, if Colorado State is correct versus last year. So that'll be something to watch. So these are the Nino 3-4 predictions by models. Notice April, May, June, or actually April and May, where we, primarily all the models are staying, except for NASA, stay above that zero line. So even though it's in a neutral, it's a positive neutral. So we're not really getting close to La Nina until July. Okay, here's June and here's July, where European models are usually stubborn here. But as we go back, okay, as we head forward in time, all these models are going to start to um, start to advance backward, and Nina three four region will be cooling down. Or at least the anomalies will be cooling down as we head through July and even August. And all the models except for European and JMA are on the left side of the zero line by this point. I'm sure by September, all the models will be on that side. European is just pretty stubborn. But nonetheless, here's the mean of all the models here. Definitely in that neutral phase to say the least, maybe even close to La Nina. All right. So here are the Nino 3-4 predictions, okay? These are what we call the spaghetti models. And looking at this, so on the left here, this was the model run from March 14th. And this on the right side is our latest run from March 28th. And you could just see in two weeks how much the models have actually changed. Okay, so the starting points, okay, pretty similar. We start at or near El Nino range. And before they're projecting a, a decrease, okay, a steady decrease below the zero line as we head through August, dropping below the zero line by August. Now the models, all the spaghetti models, at least the average of all the spaghetti models are forecasting a drop below the line by mid-June as opposed to August. So that's really interesting. And not only are we getting below the zero line a lot earlier with this model run, it also gets a lot closer to La Nina, almost touching La Nina here. And a lot of spaghetti models do take it into La Nina, but the average of all the models will probably have it at La Nina by late September. Okay, it's gonna, the curve is gonna flatten out. So I want to see if we actually do hit that, but you can see the the drop. Okay, the the downhill slope is a lot steeper than it was before. So that's in, that's indicating potentially more hurricane activity getting closer to that La Nina stage. Um, so the at the top is about a couple weeks ago, or at least a few weeks ago, and the bottom is more recently. So take a look at the probabilities of El Nino. Okay, before. We had, we're at 58, 25, then dropping to about 5 or 6% as we head towards the summertime. Now, starting at June, the probability is zero for El Nino. So we know that we're not having an El Nino. I was pretty much sure of that before, but now that really kind of clarifies it. Also, one thing to look at, so the El Nino percentages have dropped to zero, and also the neutral percentages have also, been, have also dropped from 93%, 80%, down to 60%. So that's funny. So if the El Nino percentages have dropped and the neutral percentages have dropped, something else had to go up. Yes, that's right. The La Nina percentages went up from 8% and 11% to about almost 40% chance of La Nina now. And it really, especially as we head to August and September, okay, right when those hurricanes start to form off the coast of Africa. And if we had a La Nina here, that would mean a lot more hurricane activity. So... Here from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, here are the Nino 3-4 latest SST anomalies. So starting off here, April 0.4, so close to El Nino, but not quite. June, minus 0.1 here, and minus 0.5 by August. So almost hitting that La Nina, if not actually hitting that La Nina zone. So on the left was my, I believe this was when I did my second hurricane outlook, the, about the 25th or 26th is on the left. On the right is now the 13th. Okay, and these are both valid uh, for the 8 a.m. time frame, 12Z. Okay, and these are just look at, look real quick at the anomalies, the sea surface temperature anomalies. You can see I haven't had much change. So the 25th, okay, we had some really warm temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, but some of you may not know this, but after this period, 
Okay, we actually started the drop. So after the 25th, the anomalies started dropping close to even all across the Gulf of Mexico, and then they started heating back up again. So especially the western Gulf of Mexico has started to heat up again. But one region, if you may not know this, that has really heated, or at least gotten a lot better since the 25th, is the Caribbean. And I'll show you that more in detail in just a little bit. Look at the Caribbean, it's all filled in with deeper oranges now. Before we had some white spots and some lighter oranges. So the Caribbean, the anomalies are really starting to warm up, warm up across the Caribbean. Uh, Western Atlantic pretty much stayed similar. We have a couple blue spots, but overall the Western Atlantic by the Southeast coast has pretty much stayed the same. One thing that has also changed, the actual ocean temperatures have changed. Okay, so again, left is the 25th and the right is the 13th, which is now. Now the Caribbean, before we were struggling to get a few areas at 28 Celsius, now we're starting to get a few areas of 29 Celsius, especially, near, especially in the Northern Caribbean and also near the uh, Central American coastline. And these ocean temperatures are going to continue to advance to the north here. Okay, these 80 plus ocean temperatures are going to advance to the north. And it's why we're going to see potentially a, obviously we have warmer Sea surface temperature anomalies would have a potentially a more active hurricane season. That's one of the factors. Let's look out in the trop tropics over here. So here's Africa. Okay. I mean, both the same map. Again, left is 25th, right is 13th of April. And both times, okay, both in both time periods, but have a, well, they do have a warmer Atlantic, but now on the 13th, there's even more orange and reds filled in. Also by the coast of Africa. But like I said, we don't want to look towards that area. I just wanted to show you guys because I still feel like it's important. But July, you want to start looking out to this region for development, and especially late July into August, September. And then by the time you hit October, usually the activity heads back. It, most of the activity is back at the in, forms of the United States. So again, here are the actual ocean temperatures and pretty much similar. I don't see too much of a change, except the 80 degree line has advanced a little bit further north and east. Um, that's the pattern you're going to continue to see here. These will all live to the north. And eventually, it's going to encompass pretty much this whole region here. All these yellows and oranges and reds. So eventually, it will happen eventually, but not right now. It's kind of early in the season, which is typical. So Caribbean, SST anomalies before was 0.4 above average. That is since it has since gone on an uptrend, plus 0.7. So the 0.7 degrees Celsius above average. So we've really improved in the Caribbean. And since the Caribbean is really heated up in terms of anomalies, the sea surface temperature anomalies have risen. Again, that could potentially lead to more activity, maybe even preseason activity. Okay, we've had activity in April, but most likely we'll be starting to see activity in May, if not then June. So look at the North Atlantic. Okay, North Atlantic went from a half a degree Celsius below average to a quarter of a degree. But the Northern Atlantic... Prime, and you'll see us if you look at, you can see uh, the actual North Atlantic sea surface temperature map on my website. But when you look at this, okay, this pretty much factors in the North Atlantic, including the Arctic. So it's kind of hard to factor that in. But what you can look at is the East Tropical Atlantic. We have gone from 0.3 degrees Celsius below average all the way up past a third of a degree above average. Doesn't sound like much of a change, but it does help. Okay, and the Nino 3.4, like I said, we want to see this go down. We haven't been... Like below the zero line in Nino 3-4 index for months. I mean, even go all the way back before the new year, look, we were still above the zero line and we've been for a long time. And it might even go back even farther than that. I can't see that far back. So we had dropped, okay, from 0.64 to 5, 0.57, but we've gone a little bit of an uptrend again. But eventually, overall, it's going to start decreasing. That new that Nino 3-4 ocean temperature anomalies. Dry air currently, um... Overall, it's you'll see this on my website as well. It's pretty extreme dry air. Okay, um, the only reason that we have some that we have actually have less dry air might be because of the fact that there are some storm clouds trying to work it away in there, and it's kind of blocking it out. But the dry air is still there. Trust me, the dry air is still there. And like I said, this is this is typical. You're gonna you're gonna see this in the, in the beginning of the year. And that's eventually going to wear away. Okay, one. Okay, so one um, aspect of this that I've really seen improvements of. So on the left here is March twenty second, which is the latest I could find when that video came out, and on the right is April twelfth. 
look at the tropical cyclonic heat. I mean, I haven't really been seeing much changes, but now all of a sudden we're starting to see a flare, a huge flare up of oranges and reds just south of Cuba. And this has really changed because last time, like this is pretty much a, what, three week change. So three weeks before, so if I went the 1st of March to the 22nd of March, which is about a three week time frame, I couldn't really find any difference in the ocean, the tropical cyclonic heat, but in our next three week time frame from the 22nd of March until now, we're seeing a, so the, a rapid increase in that ocean, oceanic heat. So what that's showing me is the rate in which the oceanic heat is increasing is speeding up. So the rate is just speeding up here. That's gonna lead to potentially these areas really heating up quicker. Not only heating up, but heating up at a faster rate. So that would help the development of hurricanes. Wind shear, okay, very high across the Atlantic, okay? You're all, okay, the spot that you could see, like the spot that has the least amount of wind shear in, in the Atlantic is the Central American coastline. And nothing could form there anyway, because even if a hurricane or a tropical entity were to form there, it would die due to land interaction anyway. All right, so looking at the wind shear here, so we're gonna go, this is one day out, two days, three days, four, and five days from now. You don't really see much of a change. However, five to, here's five days out. The Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean, is looking a little bit less. Okay, so a little bit less wind shear there. So that's interesting to see. But still, we're still going to be seeing a lot of wind shear here until hurricane season actually gets going. But here is the CFS uh, data here. You have a high pressure there parked across the northern Atlantic here. And what that's going to help to do is eventually drive the activity. And this is for... I believe this is, yes, so 4th of May to the 11th of May, okay, and <clears throat> that activity is eventually going to be driven westward due to that high pressure that's sitting there. So that's interesting to see with the, with the modeling here, and here is, here is the 18th of May to the 25th of May, again, kind of the same thing, we have a high pressure, and activity is going to be dr driven westward, okay, as we head through tropical season, and, and this is just May, so early indicating signs, you can definitely see the signs that we could potentially see these storms not only get stronger potentially, but maybe be steered towards the U.S. more. So that is it for today's presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am The Weather Dude, signing off till next time, and please consider checking out my website, link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.